Morning. Morning. How's everybody doing? Good, good. I have an announcement to make. I'm super excited about it, but I'm going to make you wait. I know, I know. Well, I was been praying about it and really thinking about it, and th- this announcement is truly um, because of God and what he's done. So I want to celebrate that, and I also want us to really think about the times that God has been in our lives and when he's spoken to us, and, and you know, we've been obedient and we've been blessed by it, because that's what this story really is. And so it's about the journey. And so I'm just, I'm going to tell you some amazing stories. And when I, when I was doing it, I, Chad and I were talking about, oh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then as I started laying it out, I'm like, an hour, hour and a half, I don't know. So there's so many things that I can't tell you because it's just God has been so good and he's made, um, he's been just orchestrating this for 20 years. He's really been orchestrating this to happen in, in the community of Greenville. And we are blessed just to be a part of it. And so as I'm thinking about it, we're thinking about the journey. The journey, you know, sometimes the... Uh, journey is greater than a destination, and, and I think that's what that this is what this is about. And um, so I'm going to try to get through this as fast as I can. Um, but we are going to give glory to God the whole way, we're, the whole time we are doing this. And and for us, the journey started 26 years ago. Marcy, my wife, and I we we lived in Gowan, so we've been in the Greenville community for a long time. But at that time, we were in Nuevo. Um, we were going to the Res Life in Nuevo, and we were very involved there. And we really thought that's where we we're supposed to be. Um, and, and in fact, we'd bought property in Croton, and we had our house plans, we had our driveway in, and um, you know, this is probably where we're supposed to be, and um, one time, one day I was out there, I was hunting, and um, we just, you know, it's beautiful area, beautiful land and stuff, and I'm hunting, and God just deposited something in my heart, and he just said, clear as day, you're not supposed to live here. I'm like, what? And then I got like sick to my stomach, I'm like, are you serious? I mean, it's the closest thing to an audible voice that I've ever heard in my life. And I was like, oh, man, because we've had our house for sale in Gowan for a year. Nothing. Not one person has even come. Maybe a couple people have come and looked at it, but hardly anybody. Nobody's offered, put an offer on anything. This is during the housing boom. So we're like, why isn't our house selling? This is so crazy. So I call my wife. and Hey, Marcy, guess what? God just told me we're not supposed to sell our land. And she just starts crying on the other end of the phone. She's just bawling. Because well, what are we going to do now? And I didn't know. I had no idea what we were supposed to do. I thought we were supposed to go in this direction. Well, then about a week later, we seen a sign for um, a, a, some land for sale. We seen a sign on the side of the road on Stacy Street, and there was a bunch of property for sale. We're like, and I just drove by. I'm like, I think we're supposed to put an offer on that. We're dirt broke. We have no money, <laughs> okay? And I'm like, I just, this is, on the natural, this seems really strange. There's no way, but in the spiritual world, I'm just like, something's telling me we need to put a bid on it. So we do. So, totally by faith, we put a bid on it. And I don't know, it was a little while later. Um, maybe a week or two later, we, we get a phone call from a realtor, and she says, the people who are selling property are coming home from Greenville, they, or Florida, they want to talk to you too. I'm like, all right, it's kind of strange. So we get, there's an older couple, and um, they live in a farmhouse, and so when we walk through the doors, the gal gets up and gives Marcy a hug and says, we're supposed to sell this to you. And they were Christians, I had no idea, <clears throat> and they've been praying over the offers. We were the lowest by far, but they felt like um, God was telling them, but they wanted to meet us, and so they seemed we're a young family, and they didn't want the property all developed, because um, you know, that's what everybody's doing, they're buying up property and developing it. And at the same time, we get this confirmation, then somebody has walked through our house and put an offer on it, same week. So we went from a year not selling, then all of a sudden it's like, wow, God is moving, and we can see it. And, um, and we can feel it, and it starts to become almost easier. Sometimes when, we're, when God's moving in our life, it just starts to happen, fall into place when we're being obedient. And other times when we're just fighting against things, fighting against things, it might be us doing it. And so that was, that's what I felt like was happening. And so now all of a sudden we're in Greenville. We have this property. No idea why we're there. Some friends of ours started going to a church in Rockford with Pastor Doug meeting in the Freshman Center, invited us. We went there. Boom, instantly we knew we were released from the way go, we're going there. And we're just we're volunteering. We're I'm working at GD Electric for I think, 10 years, and we got all these things going on in our life. I have no idea what God's doing, we're just stepping into it. I know now, but I didn't know at the time. And so we're stepping into it. I'm gonna fast forward way but 16 years later, Pastor Doug comes to us, sits us down and says, Hey, I want to plant a church in Greenville. Would you guys be interested? And I was like, uh, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> I wasn't like jumping up and down about it. I was like, yeah, we're, we're interested. We, we want to be a part of the church plant. And so he wasn't convinced. He came back later. We were praying about it, and we've been praying about it. And he comes back later. He says, listen, do you guys really want to do this? Do you want to you know, start a church in Greenville? We're like, yes, we want to start the church in Greenville. Um, we're excited about it, and we believe you know, 
God's in this, and this is what we're supposed to do. And then the Kmart building was for sale at the time, so we'd drive by the Kmart building, we're praying, hey, maybe this isn't supposed to be our building, and we're praying, like, maybe this is what God's going to do. Um, he didn't, obviously. Um, but we didn't know. We didn't know. We're just praying, and we're just thinking. And, and so we have our first uh, meeting at the church in Rockford, and Pastor Doug announces it, and he puts, there's a little table out in the foyer where Marcy and I are standing around this little bistro table all by ourselves. And he was like, if anybody's interested, come see them. I'm like, oh, okay. And, and uh, this one lady comes up to us. We had no idea who it is. And she says, um, 20 years ago, I was watching my television, and Pat Robertson was on the Christian Broadcast Network, and he gave a prophecy that in the year 2000 or in 2000s, uh, Greenville, Michigan, this was on national TV, Greenville, Michigan was going to have a revival. And she just gave us, she said, I think you guys might be a part of that. I just wanted to give that word to him. Oh, wow. Okay, that's nice. You know, that's encouraging. <laughs> and so we're like, great. And so we didn't know what to do with that. We just took it. And, and so then we started searching for a location in Greenville. We knew a few things. We, we just been praying, you know, God, go before us. That's been our main prayer. Go before us, um, you know, soften the hearts, you know, prepare the hearts of, of Greenville and the people in Greenville that will have favor and there'll be unity that we'll be able to, you know, um, team up with other churches and have a greater impact on the community. And we just knew, I felt like God just, he didn't want us to go in debt so we could bless the community. And he wanted us to be in the center of things, like be in the center of the action. So we're looking for a location, and we didn't want to be outside of town on the fringe. We wanted to be in the middle of things. And so we're like, God, we just, nothing was happening. And we're getting to get the day, you know, it's getting closer. Like, we're going to really find a building here. We've already kind of announced that we don't have a building. And so we're just going on faith. We're just like... I hope this works. <laughs> and, uh, and we started thinking, well, you know, we, we know we did a school thing in, in Rockford, the Freshman Center, and so let's try the schools in Greenville. So we started meeting and talking to some of the administrators in the school. Well, the middle school just happened to be the principal was somebody I grew up with in Lakeview. I had no idea. And so I started talking. He was, wow, this is great. And then the, the secretary was somebody who we went to church with in Rockford and is really connected here, and they know us. And we're just like, this is amazing. So we have instant favor. God had been going before us. And we thought, this is where we're supposed to be. We felt like this is where we're supposed to be, is in the middle school. And so then we were continuing to pray, because one of the things that we ran into in Rockford, which was a struggle, um, sometimes the school and the church didn't get along. You know, nothing got put back, right? And, this and this, we were always getting emails from the school. They were not happy with us. So we prayed, Lord, we really want to have favor with the custodians, and, and we want to get along with each other and stuff like that. And so the first day we met the custodians, we walked through the door, and a custodian walked up to us and said, I've been praying for you. I've been praying for a miracle. And here it is. <laughs> Sorry. I get emotional a lot in this little deal. So <laughs> trying to get through it. <clears throat> so we're like, that's amazing. So he'd been praying. They, they walked the halls and prayed for the students and been praying for somebody to come. And, and like, they're spirit-filled that it's going to make a difference in this school. And we're like, well, we're here. So it's got to be us. You know, we're going to do that. We're gonna, we want to make a difference. And and so then we're thinking, we have the mindset, we don't want to just be another church in Greenville. We want to bless this community, leave it better than it was before. And so as we're looking around the school, we knew we were going to have to have chairs for this place. And they have all these chairs. They haven't had new chairs for like 30 years. And in fact, the janitors, they're embarrassed. They're telling us, we're embarrassed when we have to set up chairs in the gym for other schools because they're falling apart, and they're metal, and they're sharp. They're just we said, well, what about you guys just throw those all away, and we'll buy brand new chairs, and then you keep them when we leave. And they're like, Seriously? And we're like, yes, we want to bless you. And so that was another blessing. So this great relationship's happening here. And I'm thinking, this is amazing. This is where God has us. You know, he's going to have us in Greenville just to be a blessing for this community, to school, and things change, right? And so then it's like, nope, God's saying, no, you don't stay at the school. Um, we're going to have to move because the millage passed, and they're going to remodel the cafeteria of all rooms, right? They're remodeling the cafeteria. Hey, great, um, which is a blessing, I didn't know it at the time, but it is now. Um, so the cafeteria is getting torn up, and we got to be out of here. March 15th will be our last day in this, in this room. And uh, so we're like, okay, well, with high school, high school is getting remodeled in some areas too, and it's so busy, it doesn't, it'll never work. It'll be, it'll be a nightmare because I'm just thinking, man, we, can, we are such a good spot here. So I'm just, all right, so we're, we're going to start looking. And so we start looking, and some things start to pop up on our radar and different opportunities in Greenville. And... Um, one of them was the Jorgensen building was for sale, and so we're like, oh, maybe that's it. And then, then there was some, like, out of nowhere, somebody called, a realtor called, um, and, and she knew Marcy, and she was talking to Marcy about it, and she knew Jack, the owner, and, and like, there's going to be this connection. We're just like, oh, maybe God's working on this. Maybe something's going to happen there. 
But, but going forward, we knew we don't want to be in debt. You know, we want to be a blessing to the community. We don't want to make a decision out of fear. And we just want to, let, we just want to really trust God in this. So then there was somebody that had visited our church here in the middle school. And they, and they heard me announce that, hey, we're going to have to move. And so she told one of her friends, which was a secretary in, in school here, um, that, hey, why don't you uh, talk to my pastor? Because she was a different church. She was just visiting us. Talk to my pastor about this, and maybe there could be some kind of, maybe they could help each other. I'm like, okay, I don't know. This is a very traditional church in town, and um, I didn't know him, so I said, well, why don't you make the connection for me, you know, and we'll just see what happens. I had no idea what was going to happen. Well, I get an email from this pastor. He said, I'd like to talk to you about um, your church and, and what's going on. So Marcy and I, we said, okay, we'll come. So we go to the church, but before we went, I was terrified, by the way. Because um, I have no idea. It's a traditional church. I don't know if I'm going to get all these questions about my theology and everything. And sometimes churches aren't nice. I don't know if you knew that. Um, <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm nervous going into a church, which is terrible. You know, as a pastor, I shouldn't feel that way, but I did. And so I'm praying ahead of time, God, go before us, you know, just um, soften their hearts, just unite our spirits and our minds. And so Marcy and I, we get there. And as soon as we meet this pastor and we go back to his office, it was just like, we were old, old lost friends. We just loved each other. And our spirits united, and we have all these things in common. And we're just throwing things out, and we're just talking about everything and the community and how we want to see the, bless the community and see revival and green, just all these things. I'm just like, this is pretty cool. I, I like this guy, and this is awesome. And so we're, as we're talking, we're just dreaming. I'm just like, so what do we have to do to make this go forward and stuff? And he's like, well, our superintendent, which is over the, um, his region of Michigan, would have to approve it. Then the um, board would have to approve it. And then the congregation would have to approve it. I'm like, oh, three miracles. That's not a big deal. <laughs> so, all right. Um, and so I'm like, okay, well, why don't you talk to them? And in the meantime, I'm going to, you know, just we'll be praying for it and see what happens. And so we go back, and we're, and we're praying. And, and then the Jorgensen thing fell through. We're like, that's not supposed to happen. I was really feeling like, man, something's happening here. I just feel like God is, is trying to show us something. What is he trying to show us? And, and the other day I was listening to a, a, a a sermon on unity, and I want to share this verse with you because this verse really stood out to me on unity, and I, and I think it, this is what God has, has been trying to do. But as Jesus was, just before he got arrested, uh, he's praying to the Lord. And I'm, anytime Jesus is praying to God, you know, I listen and I pay attention to what it is. And in John 17, 20 through 23, I'm just going to read 20, I think, and 20 and 21, but he says, I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. And that's us. He's praying, he's praying for all of us. I pray that they will be one. So every Christian is praying that they will be one because he knows the importance of this. Just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. And a lot of times the world looks at the church like they fight. They don't get along. To, you know, denominations don't cross over and get along. And so this is really important. Like Jesus is looking at that like, hey, you guys got to get along. Everybody's got to get along so then you're a witness for me. The people will see you guys that love each other and they want to be a part of that. So I'm like, well, maybe. Maybe God wants to you know, show the community that Christians can get along. I don't know. I'm just like, I'm just going with it. So later that day, I get an email from a lady who visited here at the school, and, and I want to read it to you. She said, love your church service. I cried tears of joy as I told God I'm amazed that I stood worshiping in my old school cafeteria I had visited 100 plus times as a child. The Lord said, I will make this church a staple to this community. A small group of intercessors have prayed um, for just such a group of people like you. We took an old prophecy spoken on national television to heart. Pat Robertson said, somewhere around 2000 Greenville, Michigan, would be a place of revival. Welcome to our city. Bless you in the name of Jesus. Again, another confirmation. We're just like, wow, this is awesome. And this, you know, that, that, this is a very encouraging word. And I was telling the pastor at the other church about it, and he said, well, you know, we actually built our um, addition, and, and we built our sanctuary in the year 2000. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. You know, there's all these coincidences and these things happening. I don't know if it's coincidence. It's just God's moving. And so... Um, so we said, okay, so then I said, what's, what's happening with everything? And he said, well, I got the answer from the superintendent. They said, proceed, yes. The board said, yes. And then the congregation said, yes. Right? Unbelievable. So <laughs> it's, it's, 
So that's, those are like three miracles. I'm just chalking. I was like, this is unbelievable. What's going on? Because you can't get five people in the same room and they agree on anything. And so this whole congregation agrees, and he's like, they're overwhelmingly yes, they're into this, let's keep going. So I said, what do we do next? We're looking at each other. He's like, I don't know. I've never done this. And I'm like, I don't know either. I've never done this. And he said, let's meet the board and see if we can't draw up a contract. And so uh, Marcy and myself, again, I'm just I'm super nervous. So I'm praying. We're praying. We're just like, Lord, you know, like, go before us. Um, unite us, you know, give them like lines, everything, just we want favor with, with you, Lord, and, and with these people. And so we get to the meeting, and it's intimidating. Again, there's a huge, they have this huge, long table, and it's beautiful, and it's a nice, beautiful room, and there's a lawyer, and a, the treasurer, and a couple secretaries, and the pastor. And so I'm just like, all right, Lord, you know, it's just, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, we, we're from the middle school. <laughs> here we go. We, we meet in a school. <laughs> They're going to really be wowed. But it was... Uh, so we just shared our heart and what we thought God wanted to see in the community. And, and as we did, I can see it was like just lining up with their vision. And, and, and they're getting excited. And so in my head, I'm thinking, you know, I, I, need, I have all these questions that I want to ask them because if we're going to make this happen, we need to be able to use the building in certain ways and all these things. And, but I'm like, God, do I ask these questions? Because I feel like that could be a little rude. Or, or, and, he's, and, and he was just telling me, I felt like just... just let me do this. Let me handle this. Because he's handled everything. I really feel like I'm just along for the ride. And uh, so then the, the, the board, they start saying, you know what? You're going to need to use our sanctuary. You're going to need to use this. You're going to need to do this. This is basically the entire building. You just need to be able to have access to everything. We want to bless you with this. And on and on and on. Every question I had, they just said it for me. It was like God had already went, went before us, and he had already prepared their hearts and their minds I didn't have to ask for anything. I was just like, are you kidding me right now? I couldn't believe it. I was like, praise Jesus. And so at the end of that meeting, we're literally high-fiving each other, all right, <laughs> hugging it out. And they're like, let's do this. Let's, let's you know, change Greenville. Let's make disciples. Let's, let's, rev- let's start a revival. It was unbelievable. This is board meeting that we're leaving. And so, all right, I'm going to reveal it because I got some more good things. Okay. Right now. Are you guys ready? So we started, so, we're, so after we left that meeting, they're drawing up the contract, their lawyer's drawing up the contract um, with the First United Methodist Church in Greenville. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a huge, it's a huge praise the Lord. It's right in the center of town. We're going to be able to do tons of outreach, tons of ministry. I mean, it's a big, big blessing. I'm going to fill you guys in more details in the next few weeks, but um, it's a huge thing. It's a huge thing, but God wasn't done um, showing us uh, what he's up to in this community yet, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share some of that to you. Did we get a picture? Do we have a picture? We can show a picture of some of the church, I think. On the inside, do you guys have that or not? Okay. Yeah, it's pretty. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's kind of like the middle school. Um, <laughs> whew, and so... And we're going to, yeah, it's just beautiful. And, and it's crazy because there's a lot of people who, who, ha, are, have met, who used to go there, like, from our church now that have relationships there. I mean, it's just unbelievable how God is uniting these two churches. And there's going to be, um, I think, redemption and, and just so many great things that are going to happen. And we're going to help each other to change Greenville. So I'm super, super excited about it. We're going to be, I'll tell you guys more. But it's, it's unbelievable. It's just a beautiful, beautiful facility. Um, it's actually in square footage bigger than our Rockford campus. Um, so we're going to be able to do some amazing things there. But I want So then, after that meeting, nobody really knows about this. Myself, my wife, and a couple other people, we go to our meet and greet at Fruit Haven. Um, and that night, the lady who had get, shared that vision with us showed up to that meeting to welcome us, okay? And so she comes to the meeting, and she shares the rest of her vision. She didn't share the whole vision with me because she didn't know who it was for. So she shares it with me, and after she shares it with me, I'm like, it was for me. Okay, so I, got to, I want to read it to you guys. So um, it starts out, she, said, she saw four giant angels guarding the gates in Greenville, on the east, west, north, and south gates. Okay, they're standing on these gates, and they are holding torches. Then the torches tilted in and started setting churches on fire. I deliberately, this is from her words, I deliberately looked for my favorites. Yes, they got the revival fire. A couple of the churches were enclosed in cement walls, and the angels could not get their torch near them. Other angels came and started breaking the walls down. 
One of the two churches got a hole in it, and an angel stuck a torch through the hole. Unfortunately, I did not see a breakthrough for the other one. I will pray for that one. I saw the little fires all around. One church, she didn't name it the first time. She said, it's a right kitty corner from the post office. It was the First United Methodist Church. <laughs> She's, and, and was scorched and burnt to the ground. Okay, and she didn't know what it meant. And, and then she said, I knew as pastors met pastors, their fire would inferno and there would be unity in the community, something the intercessors always prayed for. So she tells me, she says, you know what that means? I'm like, yes, I know what that means. This is unbelievable. We are actually going to be moving, we are actually partnering with this church that you're talking about. And you're talking about, it's not a bad thing they burned down. They got the revival fire so much that it burnt down. I mean, it's unbelievable. So this total stranger is just walking us town like this, and I'm just like, oh, my Lord, what are you doing? Like, God is up to something unbelievable. And we are getting, we're just along for the ride, and we get to be a part of this thing. I'm very, very excited about that. So um, I want to share the contract, the beginning of the contract with you guys. And this, I think, really speaks to the heart of, of their congregation and of their leaders. So at the beginning of the contract, they shared the Great Commission. And it says, Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Through this new relationship, this is what they wrote, through this new relationship, the, um, the Greenville First United Methodist Church, Greenville's oldest church, and City Church, Greenville's newest church and youngest church, shall join together by accepting the Great Commission and make disciples in Greenville and all nations. May God support and strengthen this relationship as both churches use their gifts and talents to accept and implement the Great Commission. Praise God, huh? <laughs> So that is a great way to start a contract. I was just like, praise you, Jesus. And, and as I was worshiping a couple weeks ago, um, as amazing as this is, and as God has really been working, I believe, for the past 20 years, um, behind the scenes and, and connecting us, and I, I believe you guys are here for a reason, too. I really want, you know, really be thinking about, what drew you to this church and how God is working in your life? It's, he's working in all of our lives. So we just have to see it, and then we have to step into that obedience. Um, but anyways, I was, I was worshiping, and I got the Holy Spirit. I didn't drop something, and he said, God wasn't doing all of this so that we could have a building. It was going to be much, much more than that. I don't know what it is, but I'm super excited about what the future holds for Greenville, Michigan, because that's what this really partnership is. This is a partnership so I think the community is going to be able to see churches working together to have a greater impact in the community. And not just um, us in the First United Methodist, other churches. I feel like whatever other church that wants, to, there's so much to do in Greenville. We can't do it by ourselves. We need all to work together. And I think that's what God has been showing me, and he's telling us that, guess what? We're partnering with this entire community to make a difference for him. And he's going to get the glory at the end of this whole thing. So I am super, super excited about it. Um, and I'll tell you guys, I have so many more details I'll, I'll start to give you guys here in the future, but the 15th is our last service here, so it's the 23rd, I believe. The week after that will be our first service, 22nd will be our first service there. And so that's, we need that time to get ready. We've already started like painting the children's wing and different things like that. They are just, it's just been amazing as we, as we step into the um, relationship. They are very open-handed with everything. But please do me a favor, do not crash their doors down. Um, we have to be respectful and wait. This is gonna, we're going to kind of, we're going to slowly move into this and um, we're respecting uh, their building until, until we figure things out and, and how the, our partnership is going to work exactly. But they're an amazing group of people who have been praying for revival. They've been praying, they've been praying, um, a group of them have been circling their building for four years praying that God would do something, bring revival, bring life back to their building. And God is answering that prayer, and, we've, and I think, you know, they've been telling us, we, you guys are the answer to our prayer. And it's just amazing by us just walking in obedience and just serving the Lord, how this is all coming together. And so, um, yeah, details to come, but praise the Lord, right? Praise, praise the Lord. So excited, so excited. 
All right. We have to start baptizing, otherwise we're not going to get out of here. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so there will be two services. There's going to be a traditional service, and then we'll have our service. And we don't have the times exactly worked out, but they're going to be first and we'll be second. And it's going to give us a time, an opportunity to, to, to mingle and, and connect in between services and things like that. You guys are going to be amazed. You're going to know a lot of the people that already go to that church. Um, so there's going to be some instant connections, and it's going to be a huge, huge blessing. And anyways, I got so many things I got to tell you guys, but I can't do it right now. All right. Um, we're going to pray, and then we are going to start baptisms. I don't know, is Austin up here already? All right, Austin, come on. All right. Um, Pastor Joe is going to start baptizing here in just a minute. Joe, um, ushers, can I get the ushers to come up and take the lids off this, please, as I uh, this lead us in a prayer? There you are right now. All right, Father God, we just thank you so much for what you're doing in this community. Um, and Lord, we just give you all the glory, all the glory um, for our new location and, and just... For the future, I have no idea um, what's in store for us, but I know if we're following you, it's going to be a blessing, and it's going to be amazing, Lord. Just help us to stay humble. Help us to stay pure of heart. And um, Father, we just thank you and give you all the glory for what you're doing here today and in the future. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.